Good morning. Good morning. We'll be starting downtown download in just one minute. We have a power pack show this morning. So thank you for tuning in. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's downtown download. I'm the downtown partnership president, Shalonda Stokes, with my colleague and co-host, I think they call us Batman and Robin, Councilman Eric Costello. And then we also have a power pack lineup this morning with my dear friend, Augie and Colin, both of them. And so I'll give you a little bit more of their background in just a few minutes. I wanna tell you a little bit about what's happening in downtown first. Um, our show last week, we were off, we took election day off. So I thank you all for coming out and, and letting your voice be heard in there with record turnout. So no matter which way you voted, we thank you for coming out, stepping up and showing up. Um, but instead our team actually joined volunteers from World Central Kitchen and we were handing out water and a little bit of joy and everything for people waiting in line in, at Camden Yards. And so we know in some cases around the, around the city and state, there were lines. So thank you for your patience there and shout out to my team for volunteering to go out and make sure that people were comfortable in the process. We absolutely have another busy week here at Downtown Partnership though, and starting with today's show and um, culminating with our annual meeting. And so our annual meeting will be this Thursday, starting at 4.30 PM. This is our biggest event of the year. It will be an immersive experience as much as you can, can do all of that with online. So we're designing it to feel as much like our usual meeting as possible. We'll have some live networking photo booths and. I will be reintroducing you to our organization, talking about you know, where we've been and where we're going and excited to also share that we have a couple guest stars um, who will come in. So we'll have the president of uh, BOMA International, Henry Chamberlain. We'll also have um, renowned uh, Baltimore author and philanthropist, uh, Wes Moore. So Councilman Costello, I look forward to hearing what you have to say there, because I know you'll be there. We have Mayor Lex Scott, who will be there along with our board chair, Mark Wasserman. And so I just encourage you all to please come out and support, listen, um, and, and see where we're going. Because this is in our name, it's partnership, and that's what this is all about. And so we really want to tell you what's coming in store. The event is $25 for partnership members and $40 for non-members. I want to thank the people who became members um, on here and so that part is still available for you. But all of that information is available on our site at godowntownbaltimore.com. <clears throat> Excuse me, so looking ahead, I'd like to talk about our annual holiday monument lighting that Downtown Partnership produces. This year is the 49th anniversary of that event. And you know, after the year that we have, I know it would be great if we could all be live but we can't, we wanna make sure that we are keeping people as safe as possible. And so the lights will still come on, but instead of an in-person celebration in Mount Vernon, and we're, we're gonna kick it off with um, WJZ and a special broadcast. And so that's going to be December 3rd, starting at 7.30 PM. And so the half hour segment will feature music, local celebrities and seasonal memory, memories before leading to a virtual countdown of that lighting. So please tune in at WJZ. And then I'm, I'm wrapping up, I'm coming around Councilman Costello, but I, I do wanna let everybody know about what's happening in Center Plaza this year as well. We're turning Center Plaza into Candy Cane Lane Plaza. Um, mm. and so we'll have a holiday theme light show, socially distanced of course, so for strolling. Um, and so it'll be more details on both of those events on our website soon. So, you know, as they say on TV, stay tuned for all of that. We have some great things coming. Um, so I wanna bring it back to you, Councilman Costello. And then after you, I will introduce our guest. Is that okay? So coming to you. Thanks, Shalanda. Uh, really looking forward to the annual meeting uh, as well as the monument lighting. I know it's gonna be a little bit different this year because we're not in person, but uh, still very much looking forward to both of those events. A uh, couple quick updates on the city side of things. Uh, first, I wanna thank everyone who voted uh, irrespective of who you voted for or, or where you ended up. Uh, it's critically important that everyone's voices are heard uh, and Baltimore city had record turnout this year. So very proud of, of what we were able to accomplish as a city in terms of turnout. A um, Couple updates, one, uh, please remember that tomorrow Veterans Day is a city holiday. 
<clears throat> that means that if your uh, trash is scheduled to be picked up tomorrow, uh, that's not going to happen until the makeup day, which is going to be this Saturday. Uh, also, all the recycling convenience centers uh, throughout the city uh, where folks can drop off the recycling, those are going to be closed as well. Uh, recycling uh, curbside uh, service has been pushed back out until December 15th uh, at this point. Uh, so we continue to closely monitor that situation and are hopeful uh, that we can bring that service back online uh, in the very near future. Uh, lastly, uh, Mayor Young announced uh, on uh, I believe Friday of last week that uh, there will be a new executive order which is scheduled to go into effect uh, this Thursday at 5 p.m. Uh, as soon as that executive order is finalized, uh, we will publish that. Uh, but in short, there is going to be a reduction in, in maximum capacity uh, at restaurants, retail, uh, and other types of establishments uh, to 25%. In addition, restaurants are going to need to close at 11 p.m. now uh, to help curb the spread of uh, COVID-19. Uh, so we'll uh, put some information out on that uh, once we have all the details, which I'm hoping will be in the next 24 hours. Uh, I know that um, Colin has uh, some exciting news on the restaurant front as well. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, but with that, I'll, I'll turn it back to you, Shalanda. Thank you so much, Councilman, for that. And, and I want to remind our guests to please put your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Our format, uh, Councilman Costello will, will ask a few questions of our panelists, of our guests, and then I'll come back towards the end and ask your questions. So please continue to keep them in the Q&A box. I also wanna highlight that next to your Q&A box, you should see a closed caption box. And so that is available on our show. It will be, our shows will be closed captioned. Make sure that we have that for everything moving forward on there. So thank you for that. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our guests. I want to start off with Augie Chiasera. He's the president of M&T Bank's Greater Baltimore and Chesapeake Regions, which is headquartered just around the corner from my office at Downtown Partnership. And um, both Augie and the bank have been really heavily involved in Baltimore's communities from a small and minority business assistance perspective, as well as helping all of their customers pay tech, pay check protection, uh, money management, and, and the like. He's a leader of Maryland's COVID response as a member of Governor Hogan's task force, and he chairs the Baltimore Development Corporation Board. On a personal note, Augie and I were in the best class ever of the leadership, the class of 2005, right. Woo -woo! right, along with yeah, my predecessor, <laughs> along with Kirby. And so, I mean, I just, I just want to shout out that, that the leadership is making great leaders, and Augie, you're a great man because of it. Um, and so, Colin, you were not in my class, but... I will give you a shout out as well. <laughs> Colin leads the Baltimore Development Corporation and as president and see, you know, as president president and CEO of that, Governor Hogan has has announced 250 million from the state's rainy day fund for this new round of COVID stimulus. And Colin has really taken amazing leadership role with his team to allocate that money before the end of the year. So it's a yeoman's job, but Colin, I know you're definitely up to the task with that. And so I'll turn it back over to you, Councilman. Just wanna remind everybody to submit their questions again in the Q&A box and we're ready to dig in. Thanks so much. Thanks, Shalanda. Uh, Augie, Colin, thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate your time, especially knowing how busy the two of you are. Uh, it seems like the two of you never turn it off and are always working around the clock. Um, Colin, uh, I'm going to start with you. I want to commend you as being our first ever repeat guest on the downtown download. So thank you very much. Quick round of applause. <clears throat> um, we have a special prize for you. You get the question uh, because of that. So congratulations. <clears throat> um, thanks, for thanks for having me on again. I'm, 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 I'm proud to be back uh, for a second round and hold that title. You're, you're doing something right because you made it back again. Um, Colin, can you tell us a little bit about the latest round of business stimulus funds that BDC is going to be distributing. Uh, you've got a lot of money that you need to get out the door pretty quickly. What should our audience know about these funds, particularly if they're a business that would like to apply, um, and specifically if they're a restaurant uh, who's been affected by the limits on indoor capacity? Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely the, the priority to kick off this morning with. So yesterday, uh, BDC and Mary Young announced an additional $6.5 million specifically for restaurants in the city. 
this money is being made available through uh, the, the state. And so uh, yesterday we released the details of that. So if you go to www.baltimoretogether.com, that's BDC's kind of COVID website um, for, for information, it, all of the eligibility requirements are, are listed there. Um, this is a little bit different than our, our other programs, um, which I'll maybe uh, recap for you. But this, this program is open specifically to restaurants. Uh, there's no revenue cap um, for this one. So really all restaurants are eligible to apply. Um, you can apply for up to $50,000. We're awarding funds based on uh, employment numbers as of last year. Um, so it's $1,500 per employee up to that $50,000 cap. And then for restaurateurs that may have multiple establishments, you can uh, get an additional $10,000 for your other locations. Um, again, it's not first come first serve. Um, we've done this specifically every time uh, to be able to prioritize the most vulnerable businesses. Um, and so you have about almost two weeks to apply. We're gonna open up the application process on Thursday, this Thursday, uh, the 12th. Um, and that'll run through November 24th. Uh, so you have about 12 days to get in all your paperwork. And then our goal and our attempt is to get this money out the door by the end of the year. Um, it is a huge task for, for our team who's not used to doing this, but we're gonna make every effort to get this much needed funds to our, our restaurateurs. That's great, Colin. And, and I'm, I'm very confident that you guys will be able to do it. BDC uh, is a very high functioning agency within city government that many people may not know about. Uh, and you guys have done a great job this year adapting uh, to some of the new roles that you've had to step up uh, and play. Um, and I know, um, I, I think I can speak for Shalanda here. We're, we're very appreciative of the approach that Mayor Young and BDC have taken here uh, in terms of not doing a first come first serve because what we've seen with other assistance programs uh, at both the federal and the state level is that those funds can dry up pretty quickly uh, and there's not as much of an equitable approach that's being taken. So it's very clear that a lot of thought was put into this to do things the right way. So we're very appreciative of that. Yeah, um, just to, if I don't, if you might add to that, um, we, we've seen that in the results. And so the, the first round of funding that we did, three and a half million dollars, 74% of our funds went to minority owned businesses. The largest percentage of grant recipients were black owned businesses. And we were very specific <laughs> to make sure that we targeted those businesses that were most vulnerable that hadn't received federal funding. And so we saw exactly what you said, uh, which was the reason why we did that. And as we move forward, we actually have a round of funding out now that has closed. That's another $4 million that BDC will be putting out on the street. We're gonna watch those numbers. Uh, the numbers actually may come down in terms of the percentages of minority owned businesses, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. That means they're, they're getting the help that they need uh, and they're getting through our system. We helped over 2000 businesses through our technical assistant network with a whole range of partners uh, to try to get businesses that hadn't been able to get PPP and other federal resources, federal resources. So uh, it's something that we're really proud of here at BDC. It's something that the whole team had a part in crafting uh, and we're gonna follow those numbers and be transparent in reporting them. Colin, if I'm not mistaken, I think a significant percentage of that first round of funding, uh, those businesses that received that assistance uh, they're, they're owned by individuals who live in Baltimore City as well, right? Yeah, the majority of the grant recipients were all uh, city resident owned businesses, uh, which again, we were trying to be hyper local in terms of recycling those dollars throughout the economy to, 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 boost, uh, to boost the local Baltimore scene. So uh, Colin and Augie, both M&T and BDC have robust small business assistance programs. Um, we've all seen the excellent TV ads focusing on M&T's clients, uh, and I know that uh, M&T Bank is one of the top SBA lenders in the market. Um, Colin, you have a number of initiatives. Uh, one that, that immediately comes to mind is the Made in Baltimore program. I'm going to turn it to you, Augie. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about your small business assistance programs and what you yeah, look? Sure, Eric. Thanks. Um, and Colin, that was an awesome introduction to the work that, that you're doing with the BDC. And I, what I like most about what you're doing is you're bringing dollars directly to those businesses and individuals um, that need it. So congratulations to you and the entire staff, because you're, you're going to make a huge difference. You have made a huge difference. Um, you know, Eric, small business has always been big business for M&T. You had talked about us being one of the largest 
you know, SBA lenders, not only here in Maryland, we've been the top SBA lender in the Baltimore district for the 13th year in a row. In fact, this year alone, we originated over 50% of all the small business loans uh, here in the Baltimore marketplace. But that's also true for us nationally. So m and nationally is the country's 20th or so largest bank. We're the fifth largest SBA lender nationally. So it's a, it's a business that we understand well. And if you're gonna be a community bank, you need to be a bank for the communities. And that means showing up in a way that the communities need us to show up. So um, it's, it's, a, it's part of who we are and it's part of how we think. And it's why we feature the businesses that we do in the ads that you, uh, that you had mentioned before. But I'll tell you, even outside of the SBA program, where we originated over $35 million uh, through the SBA program this year, we ended up originating well over $150 million to small businesses throughout the Baltimore community. So if you're going to be successful in this, uh, in this particular space, you've got to show up where our clients are and where the community is. And that means both doing smaller loans as well as bigger loans, as well as taking care of all the banking needs for all of the small businesses in this market. Thanks, Augie. Um, that's, that's very helpful. Colin, can you tell us a little bit uh, about some of your more hyper-local efforts such as Made in Baltimore? Sure, um, yeah, Made in Baltimore is one of our, uh, one of our programs that we're uh, excited to, uh, to, to lead here at BDC. And we just released uh, what's called our, our lookbook um, I think it's coming up on the screen now. We're really proud of this. Um, kudos to Andy Cook, who's the director of Made in Baltimore and his team that put this together. This is showcasing over 50 businesses, small businesses in Baltimore City with the products that are made here in the city. Uh, and you can see from the, the quality of the catalog here, um, this is really top-notch uh, products and exciting stuff for Baltimore. And so we want to promote this. It says, get ready for the holidays. Uh, we're, we're coming up on uh, the, the shopping season, so why not buy from Made in Baltimore? Support, support your local businesses and artisans. Uh, you can buy online, you can buy through the catalog, uh, but this is a great book. You can go to uh, the madeinbaltimore.org um, uh, and check out the, uh, you can download the catalog and page through it. Um, we're also obviously focusing on our black owned businesses this year in particular. Um, so it's just a really exciting program that supports, I think we support over 300 makers citywide uh, and um, really, really proud to do it. And this year has been incredible where we've seen a lot of our makers um, pivot as the, as the word is these days to making PPE. So uh, as you know, Councilman, uh, the city actually purchased uh, protective equipment from our local makers. Um, and so now they're pivoting back to the holiday season and putting together a uh, their, their clothing and their other, uh, their other products for us to buy. So I definitely want to give a plug to Made in Baltimore and really proud to support, support those small businesses. Oh, the initiative is great. And, uh, you know, we're, we're very excited to see it pick up steam, especially around the holiday season uh, when that's critically important. Uh, I want to shift gears a little bit uh, back to something uh, Shalanda had mentioned before. Many folks may not know this. Uh, Augie, the regional headquarters for m and is right here in downtown Baltimore. Uh, but m and has really deep ties to communities across our city, uh, from pay, uh, paycheck protection loans to your involvement with the Community Engagement Center uh, in Poppleton, uh, Project Hope. Tell us a little bit about these programs and their, how they're helping to grow financial literacy uh, and money management skills for, for residents across our city. Yeah, Eric, I, you know, as, as, as I had mentioned before, this is really, you know, coming at the market, working together with the market on a whole bunch of different fronts. So on the one hand, it's about providing access to capital, which we talked about before. Uh, the Paychecks Protection Program was a huge opportunity for us to get funds to those businesses that needed it. We ended up originating, gosh, close to 6,800 uh, pay paycheck protection loans to Baltimore companies um, alone. That was close to $1.2 billion. And what I'm most proud about is those dollars ended up impacting in the neighborhood of 135,000 jobs. Um, to me, that's putting money to work where we need it most. That is keeping uh, our citizens employed, uh, doing the good work that their businesses are doing. Um, so that's number one. But, it's, it's, but our work needs to be more than just simply providing uh, access to capital. We also need to 
to teach businesses and teach individuals about what it means to build a, a full financial life. And this is where some of the work that we're doing together with Operation Hope in the, um, in the University of Maryland Baltimore um, Center, which you had referenced before, it's an opportunity for us to work very closely with the citizens of the community and teach them how to, how to start. I mean, banking is not an intuitive business. It's one that we've learned that uh, starting from the beginning and starting at a very young age, you can teach individuals about the importance of building a good credit score, the importance of using the financial system. Uh, it tends to be a much safer system. It's a much more efficient system. And it's really set up to support uh, the individuals and the businesses in the community. So what I like most about what we're seeing over the next month or so is this combination of both providing capital as well as providing the education uh, that goes along with it. Thanks, Augie. Um, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm jumping around here, so I'm, I'm gonna completely shift gears again. Uh, I, I wanna go back to something that I know is of uh, great interest to a lot of our audience, um, Lexington Market. Um, mm -hmm. Colin, you're the, uh, you wear a couple different hats. I, I know we all wear several hats. One of the other hats you wear is as chair of the uh, Public Markets Corporation Board, uh, Baltimore Public Markets Corp. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about kind of the exciting transition we've seen for several of our markets in the city, um, Cross Street Market, uh, Holland's Market, um, the renovations at Broadway Market, as well as what, we, what we're going to see on the horizon for both Lexington Market and the Avenue Market? Sure. Um, yeah, there's a lot of excitement happening in the public markets. I think people are starting to... Uh, to see that now, um, but I got to give credit where credit's due. This actually started probably about a decade ago uh, with, with Mayor Rawlings Blake's leadership uh, when we started looking at the West Side and, and what was really key to, to making that successful in Lexington Market really became the, uh, the emphasis there with, with Dr. Furman at the University of Maryland, Baltimore. Um, and then you know, carrying through with, with Mayor Pugh and Mayor Young. And I know uh, Mayor Scott will also be so supportive of the, of the public markets. Uh, but we've been we've embarked basically on a sixty million dollar uh, capital investment campaign, uh, which is which is well underway. Um, you've seen the results at Cross Street Market with our partners at, at Caves Valley. Uh, you've seen the results at Broadway Market, which the Market Corp did uh, on its own. Uh, we also you know in, in much much help with Atlas uh, Restaurant as our key anchor tenant made that really possible for us to to put together. Um, Holland's is, renovations are are basically underway. We've renovated the entire shed. We spent about almost $2 million there, uh, which, which is now complete. And uh, we'll be having, you know, more formal uh, ribbon cutting ceremony or whatever we do in these, this pandemic age. Um, and uh, Northeast was actually our first market that we renovated. So we did the whole facade. Um, if, you, if you remember what it looked like, it was pretty dismal and depressing. And we did that one as the kickoff. We spent uh, close to $2 million there as well renovated some of the interior stalls uh, with a lot of partners, including Hopkins and the state and, and other folks. And so now we're really excited for Lexington Market. Uh, if you've been following uh, the construction, the foundation is in place. Um, so we're, we're, we're coming out of the ground, which is, which is great, um, not just from a progress standpoint, but it's also uh, helpful in the construction contingency. Being in the dirt is sort of the most dangerous part. And we did run into uh, a lot of bedrock in Baltimore City, uh, but we made it through. We got a little creative and, and, and we're able to, to muster past that. Um, the reaction and the interest in Lexington Market has been amazing. Um, and we were very concerned with the pandemic that there wasn't going to be a lot of interest from new vendors, but we received over 300 applications as part of the uh, call for vendors. And what we're really proud of is 60% of the 300 are uh, black owned businesses, something that we were really focused on. Although Lexington market and the public market systems, you know, obviously in Baltimore city, I think it was something like 5% of the businesses were actually owned by, uh, by African-Americans. And so that really wasn't reflective of, of our city. And so we're, we're on pace to try to make our markets look as diverse as our city. Um, and also 60% of the vendors that applied were city owned businesses. So again, back to really focusing on locally owned um, businesses. So we'll see where all of that pans out through the selection process, but we're really excited with the results, um, especially given, given the circumstances. 
And then the Avenue Market, we've been working with um, two local entrepreneurs, um, African women, African American women, um, uh, Cole and Aisha, who also operate the Dovecote Cafe in, in Res Hill. Um, and they've been putting together a vision plan for the Avenue Market and looking to raise the funds for that. So uh, hopefully once that gets a little bit more along, we'll be able to, uh, to, to engage more robustly with the, with the community and present some plans and ideas for, for moving that project forward. A lot of exciting things happening with the public markets, Colin, and, and thanks for your leadership on that front. Um, just going back to a, a theme that we've been hearing a lot about today, uh, support for minority and women-owned businesses. Uh, and I'll go to you first, Augie. Can you talk a little bit uh, about how m and is, is really focusing uh, on how to help assist minority and women-owned businesses? And then we'll go to you after, Colin. Yeah, Eric, we were, we were talking before about um, how m and is a bank for communities. And when you look at the Mid-Atlantic community, um, it is a community that is filled with minority and women-owned businesses. In fact, by our accounts in the Mid-Atlantic, there are over 560,000 minority and women-owned businesses um, throughout this area. So it is, it is a critical uh, component of the business community that we're supporting. And this, this effort is uh, just as much about being there for our communities in the way that they need us. And so um, about a year ago, we stood up um, a group within our small business division that is focused specifically on minority um, and women-owned businesses. And it has been um, just a, a, a great success for us. It's been a success for us, not only um, in being able to connect with businesses uh, that we can assist, but it's also been, been uh, really an opportunity for us, uh, an opportunity for us to learn from the community about what is, what's most needed. And the numbers at this point are, uh, are pretty strong. Just looking at, at some numbers I pulled together, we ended up putting on or originating onboarding uh, just over 70 new clients uh, in this market, 90% of which had a need for credit and over 90% of which were minority businesses. So there are um, some real good numbers that are behind the demographics that we see in this market, but it's all about really being a bank for our communities and showing up in a way that our communities need us most. And that's, um, that's where the genesis behind, uh, behind our work in this effort. Great stuff, Colin. Yeah, and I wanna take a moment to, to thank Augie for his leadership and being the BDC board chair. Um, this is a conversation, obviously m and is a, a leader uh, in this space regionally and, and in the city. And so he's been able to bring um, that, that emphasis and influence to, to BDC. And so in June, you know, we made a, a commitment. This was, you know, during the, the unrest and uh, the George Floyd um, incident. And so, you know, BDC made a sort of renewed commitment and it wasn't just uh, me as president and CEO, but it was also Augie as, as board chair and the entire board and, and the entire team here at BDC was involved in that. So we made a whole series of efforts that uh, were aimed at at black owned businesses, but of course minority black and brown businesses in, in total. And so some of the things that we're working on is one, you know, if you follow our social media, we're, we're constantly now promoting uh, local black and brown owned businesses in the city. We pretty much do that weekly. Uh, we're also investing in um, partnerships with, with some of our uh, minority led organizations around entrepreneurship. So we're collaborating a lot with Innovation Works, which Jane Nowachi runs operating with uh, Conscious Venture Labs with, with, with Jeff Cherry, and we hope to expand that also BCAN um, and, and MICA. And so we're really hoping to explain our partnerships with, with other groups that are doing this. Uh, so we're not doing it in a vacuum and we're supporting them. Um, and so uh, we're, we're gonna continue as part of our, our strategic planning process. We have a, a, a plan called Baltimore Together that we're working on and that'll come out uh, in, in the, by the end of the year. And uh, I mean, Shalanda has been a, a part of it and certainly Augie has been a part of it. Uh, but we have a whole, a whole committee focused on equity and inclusion. And we've gotten some really great feedback, um, very honest feedback on what we need to do as a city, as a community to, to focus on, um, not just sort of saying what people want to hear, but actually putting um, action to it and, mm -hmm. and getting results and measuring it. Uh, and so I think, you know, these are some of the types of commitments that we've put together um, that, that we're 
committed to doing. And we're also going to publish the information throughout the whole grant process. Uh, we've been collecting data, not just on whether you're a minority, um, but, but who are you and, and where are you? And really kind of honing in on that data and, and being transparent about who we're serving, because um, that'll, that'll make sure that we're serving the right folks. Um, and we're serving everybody, of course, but we want to make sure that people aren't left out. And that's been the case, I think, in the past where, where people have been left out and we're making every stride to make sure that that's not the case during this economic recovery. It seems like uh, BDC has been, been uh, very busy and, and very actively thinking about that. So we certainly appreciate it. Um, as I always do, uh, Every episode, Shalanda knows this, I have to go off script for at least one question. Uh, I, I can't help myself. Um, you know, over the over the past 10 years, we've, we've really seen incredible progress on downtown's west side. Um, I, you know, first, I, I want to thank former mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake. Uh, that, that was part of her vision. Uh, Colin, as you know, uh, you were in the mayor's office at the time. Uh, propping up of uh, the university partnership uh, in coordination with uh, Dr. Perman at University of Maryland, Baltimore. Uh, downtown partnership has played a huge role in this. Uh, I know we have other organizations like Market Center Merchants Association, Baltimore Public Markets Corporation, uh, who have been partners in this work. Um, and, and a lot of that has really been driven by Baltimore Development Corporation. Uh, you've, you've essentially been uh, the agent, if you will, to help drive that progress, uh, to speed up the process for getting RFPs out the door, getting properties awarded, uh, seeing more and more private investment on the west side downtown. Um, unfortunately, though, there's this huge misconception about BDC that BDC only works downtown. And if you're not engaged with BDC on a regular basis, like maybe Shalanda and I are, uh, you may not be aware of that great work that's happening in our neighborhoods outside of downtown. Uh, so Augie, I'll, I'll turn it to you first as, as your other hat or one of your many other hats, chairman of the, of the BDC board, and then get to you, Colin, after to kind of drill down into some of the details of just the incredible work that BDC is doing across the city, not just in downtown. Thanks, Eric. And, and Colin, by all means, jump in as we kind of go go back and forth here. So I've been a, I've been a member of the uh, BDC board for, for a number of years. And as um, Councilman Costello just mentioned, I've been chair for the last year or so. And what's a uh, couple of years. And what, what's interesting is uh, the BDC has, has always been focused as much on downtown as it has been in our neighborhoods from the, the Main Street program to some of the specific efforts the BDC undertook um, back around Mondaman Mall uh, and some of the areas in and around uh, the east side of, of the city, it really, has been uh, an effort that has been widely distributed. And, and Colin, that runs the gamut from both, you know, lending to specific businesses within those communities, and then also relying on some of the traditional um, programs that the BDC has access to, to help spur economic development for all communities uh, across the city. Um, it's always been an objective of the BDC. And I can tell you working closely with Colin um, through uh, our Baltimore Together program, that's going to continue to be a big emphasis uh, for us going forward. Because as, as, as Colin had mentioned before, this, this strategy document is meant to be the economic development strategy for the city. And if you're going to have a development strategy for the city, it needs to be for all members of the city and all communities of the city. And Colin, I think the work that you and our committee and the teams have pulled together, at least that's what I've seen so far, has really... Um, really hit the mark in terms of inclusive economic development. Yeah, no, thanks, Augie. And, and to, to sort of add to that, um, yeah, I, th you know, the, I think the issue is that the, 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 the projects that might be downtown or on the waterfront or, or the large scale projects, they have to go through a robust public uh, process for mm. approval, whether it's zoning or tax incentives, what have you. And so, you know, those are the ones that capture the, the, the newspaper headlines, but, you know, the vast majority of the work that we're doing every day uh, with the teams are, are in neighborhoods and they're helping small businesses and they're helping entrepreneurs. And so those don't necessarily reach the, the, the headline level, unfortunately, uh, but I'll just sort of rattle off a few of the projects that some of the listeners might not know that, that BDC was really instrumental in helping uh, to get done. So one that that I'm really proud of, um, and I know how much work went into that, 
from the BDC team, I was in the mayor's office, was the Ronald McDonald House, for example, in Jonestown. Um, they were building it on a, on, a, on a partially a public park. And so BDC was instrumental in putting together um, you know, the, the, the teams and the meetings to really move that project forward to you know, decommission some parkland, build a brand new park, work with CHAP, work with the neighborhood, uh, and, and so, you know, the, the Ronald McDonald team really relied on BDC's real estate expertise to get that project done. And, you know, it's a beautiful facility. The other one that people might not know that we were instrumental and kudos to Kim Clark, our executive vice president, this project would not have happened without her, is the new city animal shelter that's operated by Barks. Uh, and I know most people know Barks, they love it. They do a great job, uh, but they have a brand new $14 million facility that BDC really led the development charge on. We put together the deal to be able to swap some land with the casino and develop a brand new state-of-the-art facility in, in Cherry Hill. We work closely with the community. Um, again, another wonderful neighborhood project that's serving the needs of nonprofits. Paul's Place in Pigtown, that's another one. Uh, Augie and I were involved with that on the, on the Neighborhood Impact Investment Fund, helping, helping provide a loan for that. But BDC actually acquired that land years ago and uh, when Paul's Place came to BDC and said, you know, we want to build this facility, uh, we jumped through hoops to make sure that that uh, could, ha could happen. Um, in terms of, uh, and actually just down the street from Pigtown uh, or from Paul's Place, we just issued the Pigtown Library RFP. Uh, so, you know, another neighborhood project that the Main Street's really excited about. Our goal is to, to do a mixed use development there with a brand new library branch for the neighborhood. So hopefully that will come to fruition. And then uh, Augie mentioned Mandaman. And in addition to Mandaman, we've been working with, um, with a local developer to do Yard 56. That's over uh, in, in the Greektown area. It's now open, brand new grocery store. Um, you know, BDC was instrumental in making that happen. We also provided some funding for, for infrastructure that was much needed. Uh, we're working with the same developer on, on Northwood Commons up across from Morgan State University. Um, and so I think that kind of gives you a good flavor of, of the work that we're involved in. And uh, I have the, the privilege of serving on the East Baltimore Development uh, Incorporated with Shalanda as well. So we're doing a lot of work um, in Hopkins and uh, on, on the east side to bring jobs and, and new housing to, to that neighborhood. So um, BDC is really involved across the city in projects. Just sometimes it doesn't make, make the news. And then, of course, as Augie mentioned, we have facade improvement programs that go throughout all of our main streets and commercial districts. We do micro loans ranging from $5,000 to $30,000 for, for our small businesses, along with some of our more traditional loans that, that are a little bit larger. Um, and again, as, as we move forward with BDC, I think we can do a job, a better job, and, and Augie certainly has mentioned this and um, pushed for it to put this data out there. So we'll be mapping everything. We'll be sharing it. Uh, you know, it's, it's actually, you know, fairly easy to do now. And so we're committed to, uh, to making sure people see the, the good work that we're doing and not just rely on, uh, you know, what, what makes headlines. You know, Colin, I, I, and I hope, I hope the work that you're doing with the team and the committee around Baltimore together can really be a roadmap for all of the, the agencies and organizations that are committed to making Baltimore as great as it can be. And there's an opportunity here with um, with all of the changes that are happening for us to um, to do just that. Yeah, and the design for distancing, I have to, I just got to plug it because we haven't talked about it. But again, I mean that's in downtown, but it's through all kinds of neighborhoods from Brooklyn to Mount Washington to Park Heights. Um, that was a really exciting program that we launched for the viewers. Uh, that that was part of our COVID response, where we've helped uh, communities and neighborhoods create outdoor spaces for. You know, businesses, whether it's restaurants or laundry mats, where they need queuing and outdoor space. And so it's been really popular. Um, the communities really drove the design. And BDC just kind of helped quarterback. And we did it with our friends at the uh, Neighborhood Design Center. And so it's just a great project. I came out to one of the builds downtown um, where uh, they had a group of volunteers. The downtown partnership team was there. Uh, and they put together a whole new space downtown, which was really exciting. And, and then, again, that's happening throughout um, you know, 16 different communities in, in the city. And so uh, BDC is proud to be part of that citywide effort. Augie, oh, Colin, thank you so much. And yeah, that the space uh, downtown, I know uh, Market Center Merchants Association was very involved in that. Uh, it's an incredible space. Uh, I just had a phone conversation last night with a community leader 
uh, in Upton about the space that's going to be coming to Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, so it's really exciting. And uh, thank you for, you know, I, I try to take an opportunity every time we talk in a public setting, Colin, uh, to uh, help talk about uh, the great work that BDC is doing, not just downtown. I think it's really important for our audience uh, to have that perspective uh, and get a better understanding of all the different things that you're working on uh, to help support the economy throughout the city. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it back over to my wonderful co-host, Shalanda. Um, I know we got a number of questions from our audience, uh, so we'll start getting into those. Shalanda, back to you. Thank you so much. This is exciting, and you're right. It's some questions rolling in. A couple um, highlights that I'd like to talk about, and, and thank you, Colin and Augie. Um, it, you mentioned design for distancing. Councilman, you talked about the one that we have at Market Center Merchants Association. I do wanna make sure that I also highlight what we have in uh, Bromo and, and give kudos to our team member, Emily um, Brighter for her leadership over there. I think just what came out in, in the city responded and I know there were a number of volunteers over there who helped. And so if people have not had an opportunity to see it, I encourage you to do it, Colin. That was an amazing program there. I also want to talk about, um, to build on, I'm, I'm excited about the Made in Baltimore piece. And I know when I talked about what we're doing in Center Plaza, the Candy Cane Plaza there, we will also have a holiday pop-up that is an extension of what's happening with the Made in Baltimore piece. And so one of our team members, Claudia, um, is leading that initiative over there. And so we will have you know, if you go into the center plaza area, we have procured a number of products from these small um, minority owned local businesses to, to have their pieces in there. And so that we also provide an opportunity for the residential community to walk down, take a walk at center plaza, go in, it's safe and socially distant. I mean, we'll make sure that we have all of that, but really trying to figure out how we provide the, the amenities that are in a living neighborhood. I think sometimes people think of the central business district in downtown, it's just that, only for businesses. But from a lot of the data that you see we've put out, the downtown area has a, nearly 43,000 residents. And so it's not just for business, but for residents as well. So just wanna make sure that we get those things in there. Um, in there. And so a couple questions, and I'll start off with this one, and, and it actually came in, I think it's for both of you, and it, because the question was, is this geared towards business in Baltimore City? And so Mike is like, is what geared, you know? And so he was, are you talking to about the M&T programs or the new grants that BDC is handling? And the response was both. And so Augie, if I could start with you first and talk about when you talk about the M&T bank programs, are they Baltimore city specific? Are they geographic? And then Colin come to you and talk about the new grant for that as well. No, I think that's, that's a fair question, Shalanda. The, the programs I'm talking about are for the entire Baltimore area throughout all of Maryland. So it is not a Baltimore city specific program. I probably emphasized more of our efforts in the city because Shalanda, this is the downtown partnership. Thank you, and thank you, with, I appreciate it. we're with Councilman <laughs> Costello who's in the city and Collins with the BDC who's the economic development arm for the city. So it's it's got more of a, of a city flair to it and a city emphasis, but these programs are available for businesses throughout the region. Thank you so much and Colin, before you go, one of the things that I'd like to say, and this is where I love what's happening with our leadership now. This is additive. It's not one group only doing one thing. We're working together a lot more so that we can expand. And so although we are downtown partnership, we are focused on downtown, but we're committed to the city overall. And we right. recognize that if the city isn't thriving, it doesn't, it doesn't work. And so with that piece, so Colin, I'll go to you for that same question about the with the new grant process, who's that for? Sure. Well, for, for our programs, we are the City of Baltimore Development Corporation. So our programs are specifically only for city businesses. Um, so, but I would say that to, to, to any of the viewers that might be outside of the city jurisdiction that does have uh, a business, uh, all, all of the jurisdictions are doing similar programs. We've actually been collaborating across county, line, county city lines to make sure that you know, we're, we're instituting best practices. So if you're in one of the surrounding jurisdictions, there most likely is a program. Uh, the restaurant program in particular, every jurisdiction received funding. Um, so Baltimore City received about 6.5 million. The county received about 7 million. We were the two larger ones, but the other jurisdictions do have funding available for restaurants and you should be able to find uh, that information on their economic development website as well. 
Thank you. And for, for clarification, just in terms of the question, this money has to be distributed by when? Yeah, the state is requesting that it be spent, uh, distributed, at least to restaurants. I don't think the money has to be spent by the restaurant, uh, but the, the local jurisdiction has to get the money out by December 31st. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Councilman, this is one somewhat for you. I know we've sort of answered it in there, but I'd love to have it um, just for clarification. You mentioned the executive order that restaurants close at, have to close by 11. I know there were some earlier conversations about 10. Um, would you like to provide a little bit of clarification on that? Yeah, um, Shalanda, um, you were correct. Uh, I saw in the chat window, uh, restaurants will be required to close at 11 p.m. Uh, I know there was some discussion around 10 p.m. and that may have been uh, reported in the Baltimore Sun, but it will in fact be 11 p.m. Uh, that's what the uh, current draft of the executive order uh, says. Uh, we're expecting that probably sometime tomorrow at the very latest Thursday morning, uh, but hopefully that, that comes out sooner rather than later. And, and I know uh, in coordination with Downtown Partnership and BDC, we'll all be working uh, to get that information out to the public so everyone's aware of, of what the new restrictions are. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, Colin, coming back to you, and I know you put the link in the site just to tr make sure we understand the timeline for the new BDC um, grant that's coming out, that'll be, where can they find it and when will it be live? Sure, so right now, if you go to www dot baltimore together dot com uh, on the first on the front page if you scroll down it'll say uh, restaurant uh, program something to that effect I don't have it up at the moment uh, there's a link um, which will go to a PDF that looks like this um, and this has all of the requirements for you so you can take a look at this and then on Thursday of this week which is November twelfth uh, there will be an online application at baltimoretogether.com that you'll be able to fill out. That application portal will be open from Thursday uh, the 12th through November 24th, which I believe is a Tuesday. Uh, and so you have that whole time to fill out your information. So don't feel like you have to rush and get it in on Thursday. Take your time, fill it out. That's why it's not first come first serve. We wanna give everyone a fair chance to put together the information. Uh, and of course, if you have questions, you can contact us through the website, info at baltimoredevelopment.com. We'll try to get back to you uh, with, with any questions or clarifications, but you'll basically be able to have a, almost a two week window to fill out your application. And then, as I said, we'll go through the process of scrubbing the applications and making the awards. And our goal is to get checks out by the end of the year. Wonderful, thank you so much. Colin, staying with you, but shifting back to the lookbook that you mentioned, um, is that lookbook available as hard copies? How can people have access to it? There is a limited number of hard copies available. Obviously there's a cost of printing, so we don't print too many and most people are online these days. Um, I think you could probably contact uh, Andy through the Made in Baltimore website if you wanted a hard copy of that. Uh, so there are a number uh, uh, available, um, but you can also, I believe, purchase everything through uh, the Made in Baltimore website as well. Okay, perfect. I have a few other questions, but there are a couple of shout outs that are in here. I don't know if you both paid people to like give you kudos on our downtown download, but but Tom is saying, keep up the great work, Colin. Um, and then John is saying, what a great conversation. So just wanted to, to thank you all for tuning in and, and for being in, engaging. So, so Augie, I wanna to shift to you for a minute. And I know we recently um, met and everybody that hears me speak, hear me talk about sort of what's keeping me up at night. Right, and so when you look at downtown and, and look at what's happening overall, people, you know, people are not coming into the office as often, right? And so people are saying, so what happens? You know, when during our conversation, you talked about m and commitment to Baltimore City. And so can you share a little bit about why you're committed to downtown, what that means and, and what you're doing for your workforce sort of in that area? Sure. Um... As you, as you mentioned, Shalanda, we're very committed to downtown, and, and you had mentioned it before because we, we know we know from a business perspective that the the city and downtown in particular needs to be vibrant and thriving and growing for our entire community to be successful. So those those two elements are very very tightly linked, and it's it's part of the reason why four or five years ago. Uh, we worked to move our downtown headquarters from 25 South Charles to to One Light Street. It was a real 
recommitment for us uh, to the importance of the city for our business model, uh, but also the importance of the city for the, for the region overall. Uh, that's number one. Uh, this pandemic has been tough. Um, we, we have, um, uh, you know, we've got, if you can sort of think about sort of three groups, three groups of employees. One is our branch personnel. So we have in the Baltimore area around 90 branches. Um, those branches are open today. We have um, dedicated employees that are going in every day to make sure that our customers are taken care of, not only in the city, but throughout the Baltimore region. So they're, they're a huge part of our employee base here in the community. And they're continuing to show up uh, in a remarkable way to take care of many of our uh, retail customers as well as our, our business customers. You know, the second group of employees we have are um, really essential uh, downtown or essential operation employees that work in our operation center uh, downtown over on, on um, Washington Boulevard. And there we've got um, probably in the neighborhood of 150 to 200 employees that are coming in to make sure that the operational end of our business is working um, well. So on those two levels, we've got a fair number of folks still coming into the office uh, as usual. Where the biggest impact has been in terms of just physical presence has been in our office tower downtown at, at One Light Street. Typically we'd have between 500 and 600 employees in that building. Um, today we have in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 in that building because we've learned that most of our employees um, have been able to both effectively take care of our clients uh, from, their, um, from their offices at home. And um, as many of you have seen the data, it still is not necessarily um, you know, safe from a pandemic perspective to continue to gather in, in large groups. And so we've continued to, to sort of maintain a work from home posture for uh, those employees that have the option uh, to work from home. Um, but as you and I, you know, we grabbed we grabbed lunch together a, a week or so ago, and the streets are the streets are quiet. And and my goal as we get into the beginning part of next year is to find ways that we can still patronize the the businesses that rely on the downtown traffic for uh, for their livelihood. And whether that's that's you know ordering breakfast or ordering lunch from some of the, the neighborhood um, restaurants to just you know, being on the street and, and really getting back into the habit of going downtown. And I think that's as much a, a part of, of what I'm trying to impress on our team here is just getting back in the habit of going downtown and being a part of rebuilding a very vi vibrant community uh, coming out of this, this pandemic. At least that's how I, how I think about it. You know, I, I thank you for that. I think you said a couple things and it, it is, it's about you know, committing to downtown. It's also about, about being intentional about supporting the businesses who we know rely so heavily um, on having that activity downtown. And, and some of it, I know is supported by the grant programs that we're talking about. And on a larger scale, it is a commitment. And I would ask all of who are listening to really, you know, figure out ways to support those businesses. It is, Augie, to your point, ordering breakfast or lunch. Mm -hmm. I know our team, um, initiated a curbside Baltimore program around that gift cards to make sure that we could help reinforce all of that. So thank you for your leadership there. I know we have a couple more minutes. Colin, I wanted to come back to you on, you know, tell us what's happening with Accelerate Baltimore. Sure. Um, I just wanted to, uh, to, to you, you sort of trick my memory in terms of, you know, what keeps you up at night. And there's a lot of, you know, let's say challenges in Baltimore City. But, but this year, um, and in part to a program that I was involved in uh, when we used to be able to travel worldwide, Augie was always asking me, why, why are you across the, the, the pond there? Uh, I was actually in Italy and we, we adopted a program from uh, the city of Turin, uh, the Torino City Lab, and we used it um, as, as part of a conversation that we were having here to figure out how do we take our entrepreneurs and try to solve some of these challenges that we have, whether they're pandemic related or just you know Baltimore-centric. Uh, and uh, this year with Accelerate Baltimore, which is part of our emerging technology centers, that's our focus on entrepreneurs, tech entrepreneurs in the city. We partnered with the ABLE Foundation, which we do every year through their generous uh, funding. They fund the program. And then this year, we also joined forces with Hack Baltimore, which I know Yolanda is very familiar with. And so we were able to hook up with, uh, with, with Dion and with Dalali uh, from Fearless. And uh, Dion's with the... Uh, Audacious or 
I'm going to forget the name. Audacious. Audacity. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Um, I wanted to make sure I got her plug in right. <laughs> and so, um, so we we uh, we selected five businesses that are focused on um, solving issues. So from transportation to broadband to uh, to, to blight, I think was one of them. Um, all are uh, black and brown uh, led uh, groups, and so they're coming together. And so they're in the process now of a six week program or sorry, 13 week program led by John Davis uh, and Deb Tillett, uh, part of our team uh, to, to scale up those businesses to address social challenges. So again, it's sort of something that people probably aren't familiar with BDC being involved in, uh, but something that's really exciting and, and I'm really optimistic for the results that we're gonna have from this group and something that we can share both locally, but also, you know, again, internationally, I think Baltimore is actually leading leading the charge and, and doing great things as you all are doing in downtown. Um, we're doing things across the city as well. So just wanted to uh, put that out there for the listeners to know about. Thank you so much for sharing, Colin. I'm going to councilman come back to you um, just to, to help close it out. Um, if you would thank our guests, I know we, we stay connected and we're on text chains and everything else, but just to make sure we, we, we give them proper due there. And then after you finish, I'll just round out with a, a um, close out and a refresh to let everybody know that this, this webinar will be available on our website um, on there. So councilman to you first. Go downtown Baltimore. Um, <laughs> Shalanda, first I, I wanna thank you. Um, you definitely under, understated it, the number of phone calls, the WhatsApps, the text messages, the emails. Um, I just sent your carrier pigeon back over to you about 15 minutes, so that should be showing up at your office momentarily. Um, but thank you so much for, for your partnership and, and leadership throughout the pandemic. Uh, Augie, thanks for the great work. We really appreciate everything that MT Bank is doing. Uh, it's always great uh, to hear about that great work uh, to have you on here. I know our, our audience was really looking forward to this. Uh, and in my humble opinion, I think this was a great episode. Uh, Colin, I know you are itching to come back a third time. I want to ask you to just be a little patient. We got to get a couple other people in here, uh, but but you will be getting another invitation, uh, and, and Augie, you as well. But thank you so much, and Colin, thank you to um, Kim Clark. I, I want to give her a special shout out at BDC, um, and all the great staff. I know Justin Lane. I want to give him a shout out as well. Uh, worked in my office and for former Councilman Bill Cole for six years. I know he's over there doing some, some great work around biohealth, uh, but just want to thank everyone at BDC for really the tireless work uh, that you guys have put in, the way that you have pivoted uh, and adapted during the pandemic to continue to find creative ways uh, to help uh, the business community uh, and really drill down and focus on uh, minority and women-owned businesses. So thanks. Keep up the great work. And Shalanda, back to you. Thank you so much, Councilman. I, I definitely want to send us a couple thank yous even beyond um, to that. I see my board chair, Mark Wasserman, is on. So I want to thank him for his consistent leadership. I actually see some of my board members on there. I see Monica, I see Terry and Tom Sadowski. And so I thank you all. It just shows that we are committed and engaged. And I could not do this without my team members. I see some of them on the line, but for those who are on and, and are not, we're working hard for you. Um, we want to make sure that you see this organization and the transformation um, in its customer service focus, a, a dedicated focus on clean, safe, and, and the vibrancy of downtown. So I thank my team sincerely for that. And I also see my husband on the line. And so I, you know, this has been a 24-7 labor of love in this transition. And so I, I wanna thank him as well on here. I'd love to remind you all to please go to our website, go downtownbaltimore.com. I look forward to seeing you at our annual meeting on Thursday. Please tune in. We, this is a partnership organization. We need you to help make it successful. We want you to see where we've been, where we're going and to sign up for us along the way. As I mentioned, this webinar will be available. This, I would agree with you, Councilman. This has been one of the best um, in terms of engagement and excitement. I think we're heading in the right direction with this. And so thank you, thank you, thank you once again to all who tuned in and we will see you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for having us. Thanks everyone.